on the interstate, so... Welcome to the Cat's Garage, this is Dirk, and we're gonna do a top five today. Uh, so the top five we're gonna talk about today is top five questions you should ask yourself when you're gonna purchase a vehicle, if you're gonna modify that vehicle or not. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you should do is when you get your vehicle is ask yourself, what's the purpose of this vehicle? Are you going to use it just strictly as a daily driver? Is it something that you want to learn on? Is it something that you have no cares in the world for? Uh, is it something brand spanking new and you don't want to screw up the warranty on it? So these are all questions that you should be asking yourself when you're out looking for a vehicle. Uh, now granted, yeah, sometimes it's nice to be able to go to the dealership and drive off the lot with the brand spanking newest thing out there but as soon as you get start putting pumping money into it and time, uh, well, chances are you're gonna do something and if anything happens to that vehicle and you take it back to the dealership, they're gonna look at it and they're gonna say, nope, we're not gonna cover it, you voided your warranty. Even if that part didn't void your warranty, now you're looking at having to hire a lawyer and having to go to fight the dealership over it. Uh, so there are pluses and minuses to buying a brand spanking new car off the lot. Uh, one of the nice things is, is you get a warranty and with a lot of the cars that you get off the lot, the power that they're making now, I mean, it's, it's hard to actually go wrong buying some of these modern day hot rods you can buy straight from the factory. Now, granted, everyone buys it and then it's like, well, I wanna make it my own or I want to adjust this or I wanna modify that. Well, that's the price you have to pay when you start to play this game. So sometimes it's better to wait until the car is out of that warranty period and then purchasing a car. So one, you've not getting the de depreciation that's associated with buying a brand new car, but you also don't have to worry about as soon as you start to modify it that, well, I just shot my warranty all to hell because I changed the tune on the ECU which is a guaranteed, you just lost your powertrain warranty because you just you just changed the parameters that ECU from the factory and all their research knows that their drivetrain is going to last, typically going to last that long for whatever their powertrain warranty is. So anytime you mess with the ECU, your chances of you ever winning a warranty claim against that company and pretty much zero to none but anyway moving on so question one what do you want to do with the car so question number two now you got to figure out do you have the time to do it or do you have the money to have somebody do it so typically people don't have one or the other seldom both uh, so which one do you have so then from that point, you need to start making your priority lists. And the priority list should be based off of the next two questions. So question two is, which one do you have more of, time or money? So question three is, if you have the money, what is your budget? What are you willing to spend on this particular car? And try to plan out your build or whatever you want to do to the vehicle and try to keep within that project scope. By keeping it within that project scope, one, you limit wastefully spending money by such as you bought such and such part because well, you just wanted it for the time being until you got money saved up for the next part. Well, why not just originally save all that money up for the part you actually want? Uh, an example is for my truck. I want to eventually get the Whipple supercharger for the 5.3 liter. Well, it comes with a cold air intake. So it makes no sense for me to go buy a K&N cold air intake when the product that I actually want is 
a supercharger that comes with a cold air intake. Now granted, it's gonna be a while before I get that, so one of the things I could try to do is buy the k and cold air intake, let's say, put it on the truck, use it until I save up money for the Whipple, and then trade it out, or not trade it out, but sell it on Craigslist for a much discounted price than what I purchased it for, just to recoup some of the money that I had used. But in the long run, it's a lot better to take the 200 bucks or 250 bucks or whatever it's gonna cost, just leave it in a savings account and slowly keep putting money into that savings account until I save up for the Whipple and then purchase the Whipple and be done with it. Besides, a cold air intake, other than sound, really isn't gonna do much for you until you have a bunch of, bunch of associated power mods on your vehicle already. So, and that's been proven time and time again on dynos. So, why waste your money on it? Uh, now, question four is the opposite of, not necessarily the opposite, but the other side of the uh, equation of which one do you have more of, time or money. So, if you have a lot of time and you plan on doing a lot of the work yourself, you can save a ton of money in... Uh, labor costs. So labor is a gigantic part of people's budgets. So that's one of the things that you have to weigh is, you know, do I want to pay somebody else to do this to save myself time? Or do I want to do it myself? And then if I do want to do it myself, the best thing to do to stay organized, to stay on track, to give yourself goals, write out a timeline on what you plan on doing and when you plan on doing it. This kind of keeps you focused on your project and you don't get bored with it. You see something up ahead and say, hey, you know what? I'm working towards this. I'm working towards this goal and I'm getting closer to it. And when I get there, it makes you feel so much better about achieving that goal saying, you know what? Hey, this timeline thing is working out, you know, hey, in six months, I want to get my cat back exhaust, you know, purchased and I want to put it on this truck. So in six months, saving, 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 purchase, bolt it on, bam. Hey, I just got something done, check it off on my timeline, what's next? And then just work on your timeline. Either way, with question three or question four, you need to be able to plan out your budget and plan out your timeline. By doing so, you can set up your realistic expectations for whatever your vehicle is. Now, question five is, Ultimately, when you have all this other stuff planned out, you need to ask yourself, is the car I am working on, or truck that I'm working on, worth the time and money? So, for instance, if you got yourself a old 1980s Buick Century four-door box for your daily driver, or someone gave it to you for, you know, get back and forth in classes, Great car to work on, great car to start learning on, but it's probably not a great car to start spending money on as far as buying it rims and exhaust and anything else that you could possibly think of putting on this car. Why waste your money on modifying something that you don't actually plan on keeping? It's a lot better to take that money and put it away and start building those habits of putting money aside and putting it away because when you do that you're going to have a better time later on being able to manage your budgets manage your finances and everything else to get what you actually want and it took me a long time to actually learn that so those are the five things that you really need to look at so starting it off again number one you know what are you going to get I mean, is it something that's, what's the purpose of the vehicle? So that should be your number one question. And number two, you know, time and money. Which one do you have more of? Which one are you relying on? Uh, better yet, which one do you have the lack of? So, I mean, that should be the one that keeps you from deciding, you know, which route you should take, which leads to questions number three and four. You know, plan a budget, what's your budget? and plan it out. Number four, what's your timeline? Have it planned out. 
So this way you stay within that project and you can keep a goal ahead of yourself constantly so you don't get bored with your project. And then number five, ultimately, is it worth working on the car you're currently working on? Because you gotta remember, when you start modifying a car that you're constantly using and constantly driving, you're losing value on it. Doesn't matter, I mean, unless you have an old school, classic, you know, 454 Chevelle or 396 Camaro or something like that that's extremely rare now, then you start earning your money back. But if you're modifying a Civic or if you're modifying uh, Mitsubishi, a Subaru, don't expect to get nearly any of your money back, if any at all. So, so that being said, enjoy what you're doing. Have fun with your project. Learn on your project. The best thing to learn on is what you currently have, but it doesn't mean you have to go throw a bunch of money into it. I mean, learn how to service your vehicle, learn how to tune your vehicle, learn how to take care of your vehicle. You can do all of that without putting a single part on it. So anyway, or at least aftermarket part, I should say. I mean, changing spark plugs, learn how to do that. I mean, there's simple things that you can do and still have fun with your vehicle. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. I'll try to keep the content coming as regularly as possible. And if anything else, leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you're working on. Put it down in the comments. Uh, I try to answer all comments or at least, uh, I'm gonna at least read them all. So anyway, Y'all take care, drive safe, enjoy those projects, and look forward to hopefully meeting some of you someday at car shows, and who knows? Uh, maybe I'll see uh, your videos on YouTube, and I'll see what you're all working on. Y'all take care. Thanks for watching the Cat's Garage.